Here is the Sony model TA-V5 amplifier once again. To be honest, I was not really feeling like repairing this, but I finally decided that I should at least give it a try. So this is the result. <laughs> Quite a mess. I took out the Pulse power supply, the switch mode power supply that Sony installed in this. You gotta unscrew the metal box from the chassis and then this metal box, well, the metal box has this uh, cover on it and to take off the cover you have to take out quite a few screws as you can see. But when you take the cover off you'll find that there is another cover underneath and uh, well this required some brute force because it was actually glued in so as you can see the uh, <laughs> the metal box is now a little bit bent so apparently sony was quite worried that uh, some uh, not so qualified service technician was messing around in there without really knowing anything about it Anyway, it seems like uh, Sony's intention was to uh, have a service technician replace just a whole entire metal box. Uh, thankfully, the circuit board does still rest in this uh, plastic case, so you can actually run the amplifier without the power supply all assembled. However, once you unscrew the power supply, you are losing the ground connection between the power supply and the main circuit board. So that would be bad. So I screwed the terminals together plus this alligator clip lead to connect this one. Turn it on and it was basically the same, the same as it was before. I did have mains power coming in. Rectifier and smoothing capacitor does work. There is, uh, there are 320 volts DC present on that terminal down there, so you've got to remember to discharge that. This is very dangerous. But the power supply, well, there is nothing on uh, the uh, on the blue and red, and I measured both from blue to red and from blue to ground and from red to ground there is nothing just uh, zero and uh, <laughs> I actually had this meter in the two volts range so it would have displayed something now the other output which uh, we can't really see it's this uh, brown uh, the brown and purple measured from brown to purple and from brown to black and from purple to black uh, there are a few millivolts present but that's about it and oh god look at that that's nasty anyway uh, i did do some tests in this power supply i measured just using the diode checker i uh, i measured the transistors i measured the double diode packs there are four of them and it all seems fine i also measured these uh well these are labeled as uh inductances somebody told me that those really were fusible resistors so i did make sure to measure these but they are fine and i also uh well, you know, these capacitors, they don't look bad. They uh, they are made by, uh, oh, wait a minute, it's like uh, Nichicon or something. Yeah, there you can see it, Nichicon. So uh, they should be fine. I haven't unsoldered anything to test it, but even if the ESR on those was a little high, um, there would still be some sort of an output voltage like that it would not completely keep that from uh, 
working. So there's got to be something wrong in here and basically I'm just gonna quit on this. It's not a very it's not a very high-end type of amplifier and I really don't like this. This does have this uh, push-button volume control. Unnecessary. There is actually a motorized potentiometer in there. Would have been so much better if they had just put the potentiometer on the front because I really don't like this uh, push-button volume control because typically it's too slow. <laughs> well, it's it's either too slow or it's too fast. It's, you know, it, it it's just never good. But I guess they had to do this in order to make this look high-tech. And then considering all the other problems, bad capacitors here with corrosion on the circuit board and bad circuit glue on the, on the board, and just imagine ripping this all apart to uh, try and clean that out. Yeah, just not worth my time. One last little update. I analyzed this uh, input circuit because I was wondering what this relay does and if it's maybe part of the problem. It turns out it's actually part of a soft start circuit. There is the soft start resistor, which has uh, something thermally coupled to it. I don't know what the hell that is all about. It actually looks like a fuse. Okay, so this is a soft start circuit, so <laughs> that's really quite perfect. Sony thought of everything. And then in here, I took out the switching transistors. They are perfectly fine, NPN. And then I took apart the amplifier, and here is the reason why Sony used a switch mode power supply. Just look at this output stage. Look at these ginormous transistors. This is the kind of stuff that you normally find in a full-size hi-fi component that isn't slimline like this one. So they needed the switch mode power supply to get a lot of power into this uh, output stage. So this, uh, <laughs> if this had worked, it would have been quite a capable little amplifier. I'm quite surprised. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.